thanks for joining us for day two of the Marseille Trophy, the second event in the Audi Med Cup series. It has been another day of light winds out in Marseille, but another very, very interesting day out on the water nevertheless. And joining us in the studio to have a little bit of a chat about it is Tony Langley, the owner-driver of Gladiator. Of course, you guys had a win today. How exciting was that, Tony? Oh, it's pretty good. Congratulations. Yeah. And uh, Tom Burnham from uh, Quantum, the pitman on board uh, Quantum. You guys had a... A mixed day of sorts. Before we get into the racing though, we're going to have a, li a little look at the city that is hosting the second of the event of the Audi Med Cup trophy. The Audi Med Cup returns to Marseille for the fourth year running. The stunning Notre Dame de la Garde sits high over the majestic old port, which is this week home to the eight TP52s and five Soto 40s. Right alongside the town hall, this has become an iconic snapshot of the Marseille trophy. Winds are either sea breezes or the infamous Mistral, and there are two race courses, the North and the Rad Sud. The wind conditions from Cash Cash are quite, are quite different in Marseille, it's a light beginning. Um, today we can expect um, sea breeze entry in the, in, on, the, on, the, on the field, um, expecting around 14 knots, and maybe at the end of the week we're going to see more breeze than uh, we used to have in, uh, in Cash Cash. So, the week in Marseille should be complete, like light wind and strong wind. The sea is a way of life for the oldest city in France, and it's a spectacular setting for the second Audi Med Cup event. Well, Marseille certainly gave the fleet a shake up today. We were racing on the north course. Here are the best bits from races three and four. A difficult set of conditions forced the Audi Med Cup race committee to delay and then move the course to the Radsud for the second race. But the first race saw Quantum Racing, having won the two previous, went out and did it again with a perfect start and exemplary first beat to lead around every mark in the light winds on the Rad North. The action of the course was elsewhere. The light conditions and proximity of the Friol Islands to the top of the main course Left, the left-hand side was favoured initially, but during the second lap, the right came good, and teams, including Audi, Azura and Gladiator, managed to climb back into contention. But it was Quantum all the way to take the win, and Ran came second. Gladiator had their best result only after only three races, finishing in fifth. Postponement delayed the second start but then when it got going the best was for Audi all for one they had their best of the of race so far they took what might have seemed the unfashionable side of the course to dominate the first beat and round in the lead their first time ever in this position with a new 2011 boat the first beat had not been easy and many of the boats on the left hand side had got left behind but the smartest starter was Synergy sailing an almost perfect first beat moving across to the favoured side but ultimately was Gladiator who took the win. The Soto 40s got their start off much later and 22 sailed by the local Marseille crew won the first race When they finally got going for their second race of the day, the wind was already getting light at seven o'clock in the evening. The right-hand side looked to be pretty good for a long time, but it was Iberdrola from the left that really sailed a perfect race and were never threatened. Last downwind leg to the finish, saw three boats sailing very close together. The local boats taking a tick out to the right for the last beat. But as the sun set on the course and the crew of the British boat watched Iberdrola cross the finish line to take another win. And 
the Soto 40s today, but let's just revert back to the TP52s for a moment and take a look at the leaderboard. Uh, Quantum is still on top of that leaderboard, but they hold a very, very slender margin. I think there's just, uh, what, two points separating the top four boats there, so they've really tightened it up. And Tom, unfortunately, that was because of that last race. Can you talk us through uh, that last race? What exactly happened, I guess, is the question. What went wrong? Uh, we had a um, pretty bad start for one thing, but we managed to get back in the race on the first beat and around the top mark in fourth place. Uh, the top three boats were, these guys were quite launched. Um, the Gladiator, the uh, Synergy, and um, the Red Audi boat were quite far ahead, so we were kind of leading the second group. And um, we just didn't have a very good run down that uh, first leg downwind. And uh, ended up in the back of the pack, and you know, it's a pretty, it was a very, very shifty and all over the place, shifty, windy, puffy race in that second race today and a little bit unpredictable, but we also didn't sail well. And, and um, you know, the, the, the story here in these events is that all the boats, or all eight boats are fantastic. So they're all really high level sailing teams and it's really hard to, uh, hard to win races no matter, no matter how, how good you think you might be. So it's pretty easy to come last in one of these races and uh, it happened to us today. So it's part of the deal. Yeah, absolutely. And Tony, it's, it's not very easy to come first, and you managed to do that today in, in your uh, only second TP52 um, regatta after um, Palmavella first, of course. And I mean, you've made a lot of changes to the boat and to the crew, I'm sure. How pleasing was that for you to come away with a win today? Oh, it was fantastic. It was, uh, you know, it wasn't expected. And, uh, you know, we came into this, into this thing without any expectations and you know, anything better than the last position. On paper, we should be last every time, every race. <laughs> that, that's but, absolutely true. And tell us about that, that last race. Were you a little bit scared to even look what was going on behind you, see how far behind you everyone was? Well, by the time we got to the, uh, to the, second, the second windward mark, you know, we got a pretty, pretty convincing lead. And, you know, the first pack was uh, three boats, all for one, uh, ourselves and, uh, and Synergy. And we were lying third at that point. Um, but um, I looked over my shoulder, down the, about halfway down the uh, the last uh, the last run, and uh, we, we'd extended quite well there. So um, we just went for a we just went for a, a, another high risk, and uh, and, it, and it paid off in the last in the last quarter. So. Now, yeah. just before we went on here, you actually had your daughter on the phone. How excited was she to hear oh, about she was, Dad's oh, big win? Oh, she was pretty excited. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, she's been with me on, uh, uh, she was over at Palmer and she'll be with me on, not, not here this time, but she'll, she'll be coming on, uh, on some future ones. Good. Well, it was another exciting day in the Soto 40s as well. It was actually day one of the Soto 40s today and uh, the Marseille, uh, the local Marseille Team 22 won that event and then we had Iberdrola winning the second event. They did so well in Cash Geis and managed to, to pull it through. And uh, Quant Quantum Racing is also another one of those teams. I mean, Iberdrola was so successful in the, in the stronger wins. I guess Quantum, you could say the same thing. You guys did so well, but... In terms of local advantage and everything and knowing um, how it works out here and getting to grips with the light airs, how much of an advantage do you think that would have been today for 22 in the Soto 40s? Oh, for sure there was um, some geographical effects happening in the race course today, so um, local knowledge certainly wouldn't have hurt. I think we, we drew on a lot of historical memories and data and looked back at some of, the, some of our da data from the last time, the previous three times we've been here in Marseille racing. And, and for sure, those guys have probably hundreds of years of cumulative data and of you know memories of racing out there in, the, in these conditions. So, for sure, it would have helped. There's definitely some geographical things happening, and and uh, any local knowledge would have been a big help today for sure. Absolutely, it's been a very very interesting day of racing out on the water, and uh, we're expecting more light winds tomorrow. So who knows what's going to happen? And then we've got the coastal race on Saturday, and hopefully we might even see a little bit of Mistral on Sunday. Well, thanks for joining us for the day two highlights of the Audi Med Cup, uh, the Marseille Trophy in the Audi Med Cup. Uh, join us back here tomorrow at 1300 CET for Audi Med Cup TV. For now, bye bye.